Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab, otherwise known as MoFi, recently admitted to using direct stream digital technology to create digital master copies of the original analog master tapes. These were used to produce limited edition reissues of popular vinyl records instead of the original analog master tapes. This revelation has caused an uproar in the audiophile community, as buyers of these records felt they were misled by MoFi. Without actual information provided by MoFi, buyers assumed that limited edition reissues were made directly from the analog master tapes. With the banner Original Master Recording appearing at the top of the record cover, it's understandable that buyers would believe the record was made from the original master tapes. MoFi and other specialty record companies often produce records that sound as good or better than the original. Some tout the use of proprietary technology and processes which they claim yield superior sound quality. The audiophile community is willing to pay a substantial premium over the CD, SAD, or digital download of the same music to obtain superior sound. MoFi has apologized to their customers for not being fully transparent on the music source used to create these records and promise to do better in the future. Their continued viability as a specialty record producer depends on restoring trust with their customer base. This controversy piqued my curiosity about the sound quality of MoFi records and the DSD encoding decoding technology used to create some of these records. I set about to do comparisons of the sound between the various analog and digital versions of the same music which I have in my possession. In 2006, MoFi produced a vinyl LP of Madeleine Peru's Careless Love album. There is no mention about whether this was made from the original analog master tapes. The only notable technical information included with the record is that half-speed mastering was performed by Stan Ricker and Sean Britton using the Gain 2 Ultra Analog system. It's reasonable to assume that Rounder Records recorded, mixed, and mastered the original album digitally in 2004. With the introduction of digital music in the form of a compact disc in 1982 and increasingly powerful digital computing processors, digital recording, editing, and mastering technologies eventually displace their analog equivalents in professional recording studios. I do not have a vinyl version of the original album, so I can't do a like-for-like -like comparison, but I do have a copy of the original CD. On my audio system, both versions sound identical. The sound is clear, full-bodied, and balanced across the frequency spectrum. There is no bloated bass or shrill treble. Dean Park's guitar, Larry Golding's organ, and David Pilch's bass provide superb pace, rhythm, and timing. Mm -hmm. Peru's voice has often been compared to Billie Holiday's. It is rich, slightly dusky, and full of expression. There is very little record noise, and the 180 gram disc is perfectly flat. Sony and Philips introduced the Super Audio CD and DSD direct streaming digital in 1999. However, SACD failed to replace the compact disc as a mainstream distribution format. Out of my 400 plus CD collection, I own one Super Audio CD. It's an analog productions reissue of an album by Cannonball Adderley featuring Bill Evans called Know What I Mean and was originally released in 1961. This is a hybrid disc, meaning that there is a CD layer that can be played on any CD player, as well as an SACD layer, which can only be played on an SACD compatible player. The SACD includes an insert touting SACD and DSD as the next generation in music reproduction. DSD is a one-bit system that uses 2,822,400 samples per second to record and play back digital audio. DSD can theoretically reach 100,000 Hz. 
where CD has a dynamic range of 96 dB, DSD recording can achieve 100 dB across the entire audible range. The album cover states that Doug Sachs mastered the recording from the original analog tapes using the Mastering Lab's proprietary all-tube electronics until the final digital conversion. I had never done a listening comparison of the SACD and CD versions because I thought none of my CD, DVD, and Blu-ray disc players could play SACDs. To my surprise, my Sony BDP S580 Blu-ray player purchased in 2011 does support SACD along with many other audio and video formats. If you don't have a disc player that can play SACD and don't want to spend thousands on a new SACD player, check out your local thrift store. You might find an SACD compatible disc player for very little money. I volunteer at a thrift store and I can attest that many Sony disc players have come through the store over the years. Even though Sony invented SACD, not all of their disc players are capable of playing SACDs so you should look up the specification of a particular model of interest. To confirm that the Blu-ray player could actually detect and play SACD, I connected the player to my home theater system via HDMI and observed the on-screen display on the TV. The Blu-ray player recognized the disc as an SACD. When I played the first track, it recognized that it was playing a two-channel DSD source. And there was no setting on the Blu-ray player that would allow me to select the CD version over the SACD version. In order to play the CD version, I would need to play the disc on a regular CD player. I relocated the Blu-ray player to my audio system, stacking it on top of my NAD CD player. Using two different disc players to do an A-B comparison is not ideal, as there is no way to determine the effect of the disc player and its internal DAC on the sound. The NAD CD player, when new, cost around $350, while the Blu-ray player cost around $170. So both disc players are in the same ballpark in terms of price and performance. I used a pair of Wireworld RCA interconnects to connect each disc player in turn to my single input tube amplifier, which has its own volume control. Here are the SACD and CD spectrum profiles from my smartphone for the first track, Waltz for Debbie. These profiles confirm that the output levels from each disc player are approximately the same. In my experience, a louder sounding version often is perceived incorrectly as sounding better. I found the sonic presentation of the SACD version to be softer and smoother. The leading edge of notes seemed less crisp than the CD version. Some would characterize this sound as being more analog. On my audio system, I find the sound from records often sound softer than their CD counterparts. The soundstage is set further back on the SACD version. On the CD, Bill Evans' piano has a bell-like clarity with notes taking longer to decay. Furthermore, the imaging of the instruments in space is more precise and three-dimensional on the CD. To my baby boomer ears, the CD version was more engaging and captured my attention for a longer period of time. According to Wikipedia, FLAC, or Free Lossless Audio Codec, is an audio coding format for lossless compression of digital audio, developed by the XIPH.org Foundation. Digital audio compressed by FLAX algorithm can reduce the size of a digital audio file by 50 to 70 percent of its original size and decompress to an identical copy of the original audio data. No wonder music streaming services use FLAC to stream CD quality music. Apple's version of FLAC is called ALAC. In 2012, I purchased a DSD download of Diana Krall's The Look of Love album from Acoustic Sound's Super High Res website. I also downloaded a 24-bit 88 kilohertz FLAC version from the site. 
and I also ripped some tracks from my CD into a 16-bit 44 kilohertz FLAC format using J River Media Center. The Super High Res website closed in December 2020 due to lack of demand for downloaded music. By 2020, music streaming services had displaced music download services as the go-to source for music. This chart summarizes the digital characteristics of WAVE, FLAC, and DSD formats for the first track of this album. For the DSD audio file, labeled DSF, the bitrate is approximately twice that of the FLAC version. File size is also almost double. This means that downloading or streaming DSD encoded music is more data intensive than FLAC and takes up more storage. This could be important if your internet or mobile data service provider limits the amount of data that can be transferred each month or if you have limited storage on your music listening device if downloading music for offline listening. You can also see that the compressed 1644 FLAC version has a lower bitrate and smaller size than the uncompressed WAV file. Using my music laptop and a USB connection to a MyTech DAC, I did an A-B listening comparison of each track of the album. The MyTech DAC supports native DSD playback as well as PSC PCM playback up to 24 bits 192 kilohertz. As I recall, my impression in 2012 was that the DSD versions were slightly softer than the FLAC versions. The FLAC versions sounded more dynamic, lively, and airier, as if the musicians were playing in a three-dimensional space. One of the criticisms of MP3 compressed music is that the airiness of a recording is diminished compared to an uncompressed CD version. In my opinion, this airiness is the basis for creating the illusion of a three-dimensional sound space on a good two-channel audio system. For me, the incremental sonic improvement of high-res DSD and FLAC was not sufficient for me to embrace downloading music over the internet to my computer. I was also not enamored with the prospect of ripping hundreds of CDs onto my computer in order to achieve a better sound than a CD played on a CD player. The arrival of Spotify and Tidal Music streaming services gave me instant access to a vast library of very good sounding music. Their AI generated playlists have introduced me to artists I would have never discovered flipping through CDs and LPs at my local record store. Using digital recording technology to achieve a more analog sound is not quite the same as trying to faithfully capture the sound of the original performance. For those of us who grew up in the 50s and 60s, analog sound meant listening to music on a tinny AM radio. I found many records sounded muddy. Vocals were often drowned out in the mix. They sounded warm only because they lacked low and high frequencies. Tone controls on amplifiers and receivers made the sound more palatable. Is this what you want to listen to in the 21st century? Until a few years ago, I thought the reason my vintage record sounded muddy was due to poor recording, mixing, and mastering. That was before I started upgrading my audio components. The component that contributed the most to removing the veil off my records was not the expensive turntable, or the modern moving coil phono cartridge. It was the top-notch phono stage. Now, most of my re vintage records sound as good as my Madeleine Peru MoFi record. I hope this video has piqued your interest in the various forms of digital audio and triggered a desire to do your own listening comparisons. Happy listening!